it's Dave Landau, and you're watching Andy Smith, the coolest comic book creator around. Just ask his mom. I have. All hail Comets Gate. Bam! Ba Bam! Bam! <laughs> And that's me. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? It is another exciting episode of The Professionals, and we will uh, be bringing in the bros soon. I want to give some shout outs to people that are already with us. So let's uh, let's take care of some business. Quoth the Raven is here. Hello. You are the first one. Uh, Rob Dog in the house. What's up? Luke, hello. Oh, holler. Holla! I hear you. Citizen Ronan, hello. Randy Howell, Stippling Vaughn, Marcus Kellegrew, hello. Uh, let's see. Praetor7, what is up? Kevin Thomas says the Brady Bunch, the Brody Bunch. Oh, yeah. I like that. The Brody Bunch does ride again. Uh, Shadowhawk, hail to you as well. One Wicked Evo, hello. Uh, and there is a succubus behind me, which brings me to something else real quick. I know we saved the pimping for the end of the show, but as you can see, Cordrath, the reckoning is coming. Link is in the chat. Uh, please sign up now for it and you'll get an exclusive trading card. That's right. And I just finished the art for it today. So if you sign up and back the campaign, you will get this limited edition uh trading card of the wonderful succubus Lilineth. So sign up now and get that bad boy. Smoky Concat, hello. So there's that. Uh, without further ado, I want to bring in some of the bros. Uh, he's a, he's a, well, what Kevin says, what now? Andy always pimps, but never simps. You know it. I only simp to one person and that's my wife. And uh, she'll beat me if I don't. Oh, but I like it when she does. Unlike AOC, my wife puts real handcuffs on me. And on that note, let's bring in another guy that likes to be handcuffed. He's the Wraith himself. What's up, Halo? <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to start insisting. I'm, I'm backing away, far away from what you just said. But I'm on the intro of the professional, since I'm last... It should I, I it should say and Aaron Lopresti as the Beaver. I think that's really what uh, that those credits need. So I'm just I'm throwing that out there. All right. Well, the next guy that comes in gets this. You, I didn't have something for you, but he gets this. Certified badass. I don't get that, but Graham Nolan does. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. New York Police Department. I've been I'm, handcuffed. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but were you handcuffed for like because you were actually arrested, or were you handcuffed because I know your dad was a cop and it was like, you want to know what it feels like? Because my dad was a cop. <laughs> I was arrested, so <laughs> I got to ride in the back of a cruiser for real. I got taken to the kindergarten for day one in the back of a cruiser. <laughs> nice. It sucked, I gotta say, because oh. you know, you walk into kindergarten your first day there. And everybody turns and looks at you because you're the late one coming in. You're walking in with a cop. Not good. <laughs> no. And Aaron, I know you feel left out, so I'm going to redo you because I do have something for you. And now we have Aaron Lepresti with this. <laughs> That's perfect like that. for the wraith of Aaron. It is. Bring the thunder, baby. Bring I am. The and then uh, for, uh, for our next guy, we've got this one. 
Lock and load. Oh. Fragaboom. <laughs> Lock and load. What's Lock happening? Lock and loaded, baby. What is uh, oh. Hi. Yeah. yeah my, uh, my, my wife is out of town until Thursday. So I am Hi. I am solo dad of four kids. Uh, working and doing two jobs. I'm I'm doing cooking and cleaning and working and yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah, man. And know even though feeling. I already used this for myself, Art wasn't here, so I'll, I'll use this one for him. There was only one man for the job. And he was Art to bear. Oh no, there he is. T Bear, lock and loaded. Lock and loaded. Load. Uh, lock we, and loaded. <laughs> He's we, loaded, all right. What are we drinking, uh, gentlemen? Uh, is that yeah, a heart's already loaded? I got water, that. water, yeah, heart, heart the refreshing drink, heart stricken grape juice out of a wine glass. So, locale, locale IPA. I'm drinking the tears of uh, I like how Frank is like, I got I hear a little bit by myself, so I'm drinking a lot. Drinking the bitter tears of bitterness. You're just, you're just hoping every day that your wife comes back, aren't you? No, it's actually been great. It's just uh, it does feel kind of circusy, and and uh, now I understand why my wife is crabby half the time. Yeah, she doesn't watch the show, so you know it's all good. Uh, but uh, no, I get it. I get it because like they these kids they they take you to they take you to the the ropes, you know. That's why young take you to have the babies. Show. Yeah, not yeah, well, I, I I had my first when I was 38, and she, I was 46 you, no. when she was born. So, well, I had my second when I was 38. So my daughter's 20 right now, and you know, yeah. yeah. But hey, I didn't get married until I was 29. So you know, you give me a little bit of time there. We had Josh yeah. right away, but uh, spaced out the how, second. How old was Josh? He just got married. Was he your age then when he got married? Yeah, well, actually, yeah, he was 28. So was I. Oh, Maybe he'll be on the same schedule with the first kid, too. Could uh -oh. be. Grandpa. Yeah. Hey, grandpa. It'll just, I have been call, I've been getting called like Grandpa Wendy for years, Mandia. at least. It'd be nice if it's actually finally true. I like That's right. Wendy But it was Mandia. editors that were calling you. No, that. you're not. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to work your grandpa? grandpa? Get out of here. Oh, my God. Get on out of here. You here to deliver lunch? No, pages. <laughs> uh, That's right. Hit the like button. Kevin says hi to little Fraga. So, and look at that. It's true. She's a talker just like <laughs> daddy. Oh, she talks more than I do. And she's a better negotiator than I am. She will break you. She is Ivan Drago of, of toddlers. <laughs> I will break you. She it, And she will say, as I'm like feeling crippled, if he and dies, he dies. Beer. I'm like, wow, you're brutal. Like <laughs> <laughs> like All right. You hear her? She's trying to steal like my that? beer. She's like, I drink your beer. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> not for another uh, 18 years. Right. 19 years. So anyhow, tonight's topic, I, you know, I collect original art. from talk, and, and when I say original art, I mean when yeah. art's not at his house, he comes over here and he sits in my closet. So, <laughs> Uh, this, this sounds this sounds again much like his uh, serial killer story, right? I get I get a lot of work done in that closet. Well, you, bet do. you do. There's yeah, but there's, there's so much better when you come out of the closet, Art. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get even more work when you come out of the closet. That's right. That's how it works. Uh, yep. Oh, real quick, right I'd like to start off, Joseph Bernardo, if you're uh, watching. Uh, I hear somebody in your family has a birthday yeah, today. Uh, Nico. Nico, happy birthday. Nico. Happy 16th birthday. That's a big one. Man, happy birthday, Nico. I hear he's into 80s rock and roll and hot rods and hot chicks. Uh, Have you heard him play the guitar? Like sometimes Staple, Staple play a bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Guitar playing. It's pretty good. That's cool. Randy Howell, thank you for the $10 super chat. He says, you guys got to work hard to hold my attention tonight. Wraith of God and Thin Blue Line arrived today. Um, that's actually funny. I got both those books on the same day as well. And it was really a Sophie's choice on which one I was going to read first. Because I'm like, oh, what do I do? Dude, so you got to read with, the bro first. I, I, I did. I went with okay. Wraith of God first. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, 
and then I did Thin Blue Line. Both very good books. I got to say, Wraith was uh, uh, Aaron brought his A game, so that was good. Well, it's neat so. to see, Aaron. There's a lot of people are posting that they got the books and they're very, very happy. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know, but you had that sticker collection. It's pretty cool. They're all yeah. like the same uh, layout and everything. Yeah, I was. I I remember as a kid getting like this sticker set of Marvel characters, right? And uh, I don't remember where I got them at a Kmart or someplace like that, but. You know, there's like Daredevil and Spider-Man and the Hulk, you know, all these old drawings they lifted off the covers or different. And, of course, like a dummy, I, I stuck them all over my dresser drawers. But <laughs> <laughs> And I, I wish I still had them. Because yeah. my, my wife is seven years younger than me, and uh, I mentioned certain things to her, and she's like, that's not real. Wasn't there a product called Presto Magic that had, like, these, like, big scenes and you could, like, rub on – like Scooby Doo, or like they were these sort right. of that you would kind of burnish on to the scene. Yes, that's no magic. I Is that so. what? No, that's Marvel stick on. Yeah, those. Yeah, these oh. are what Aaron was talking about. Yeah, these that's are awesome. from my childhood. This is all I have left. Oh my gosh, those were so awesome. So I want to do my own sticker set. That's so I cool. did it. Oh, sweet. Well, I, I told Dennis. I said, I got to be honest, I love this trading card. Or not trading card, but playing card. I said, I love the playing card, and I can't wait till you do 52 more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. People, it, it cracks me up because people are like, they're, they're. I'm getting a lot of positive response about the, the playing card. They're like, this is an actual playing card. This is awesome. I'm like, well, what, what did you think it was going to be? You know, but I guess people will do like playing cards, but they'll... They'll make them like trading cards, but to right. kind of be a faux playing card. I went to a trading card company or a playing card company and it had them make me, a, you know, several decks of those. And so they're actual playing cards. So. Oh my God. What is blowing? My, my thing's blowing up. Everything's blowing up. Art's oh. blowing up my phone with big thumbs up from Art. Thank big you. Thumbs Art. up. Okay. So, anyhow, back to the topic. We're going to talk about original art. Um, I know all of us own some original art from other artists. Art shaking his head. No, he inked so many people. Don't even tell me you don't have some originals left. You might not collect it, but you got to have something. If okay. not, when we come to you, you can just go, well, I'd like to own this. <laughs> this is what I would really well, like to own. What well, is, the funny, uh... so, so we're doing three rounds. So basically the first two rounds are just two, two pieces that if you had to get and maybe you only have two, but let's say you had to get rid of everything but two pieces. What two would you keep? And then the third oh, is round. That the idea? Yeah. And then the third Wait, round what's is. first round? I was distracted by my kids. <laughs> the, the first two rounds are basically your favorite two Grails, pieces. Like our favorite two, like if, if we could only keep the two. Right. Round then, one, round two. Got it. And then the third round is the grail that you don't own, but you'd like to own. That's oh, I've got the grail that got away. Well, now, there there's those and there's ones that are like, you know, uh, you could never afford. But if you could. Oh, right. dude, well, I think the, the one that I hmm. want, and I'm not going to obviously give it away what it is because it's not the third round. But I will say this. Right. I have a nice high red scan of it because it was on Heritage Auction a few years ago. So I was able to grab a high red scan. That's but good. Ooh, nice. I couldn't afford it, so. <laughs> so you just you just copyright infringed it. That's cool. Well, not really. It's, yeah, it's, he didn't make money on it. Yeah, I didn't make money on it. How do we know he's not printing them out of his basement and selling them? Because I don't have a basement. Oh well, there you go. Oh, snap. I'm printing them above in my attic here. Logic, above bro. Garage, yeah. Science. So anyhow, uh, because my OCD's been killing me since I dropped Aaron for so I could bring him in with the new thing, I got to put him back to where he was. So, Aaron, you get to go first. <laughs> what? Okay. Well, God, this is hard. I mean, I don't have a great collection, but I do have some interesting stuff. But you want, like, the two best pieces that I could not part with? Yeah. And, dude, I – look, you and I probably – well, I don't know. It might be a tie between you, I, and Dan, but I've got three portfolios like this filled. Uh, yeah, I got good. one. I've only, I've only got this this big one. I've I got, got one. filled, and I pulled out two pieces. Andy, you need to adjust your camera. 
uh, your chair and you keep disappearing. I know <laughs> because it's not a green screen. It's a, I'm that's, just going to dump it. That's it's the magical. good thing about it. We're waiting for him to disappear all the way. You shut your dirty mouth. I'll just do all that. right. Okay. We well, go. let me let me let me throw this at you guys. Okay, because I've got uh, I've got a plug painting from the his card set. You guys remember those? Uh, yes, I do. I remember you seeing remember the painting that? hanging up. Um, I've got a uh, Plug inked by Nebre's original page, and I've got a Busema inked by Nebre's original page, and all three of those would be uh, okay. I'm I'm taking it down off my wall. Okay, that's where this is. Okay, but this yeah. has got to be the Plug then, right? Well, the Plug. I promised Plug I would never sell it because he sold me at such a good price. But that's out in the hall. So, oh. all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to a better camera. Okay. So that and we I'll get some screen, yeah. some high res beauty. I got this Razor Cayo that I think uh, Fraga Boom turned me on to, and it's a tremendous, tremendous camera. All right. All right. I'm gonna fold. Now you see this? This is from. Oh. This is that from. View, that's View Sama. Yeah, inked by Nebres, hand colored by Peter Ledger. Oh my gosh. This That's is gorgeous. This is weird. This is from that, you know, that Marvel Super Special? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Warriors of the Shadow Realm. They did like three issues, magazine size. It was like a in, magazine. Yeah. I got yeah, 78, that. about 1978. Yeah. This page came up on Comic Link a couple of years ago. Oh. And this was like one of my favorite things from the, uh, from the 70s. Was that weird world stuff? And um, so this came up on auction, and you guys will not believe it. This thing sold. For, I got it for six hundred and forty bucks. Wow! Just two, like three years ago. I mean, I couldn't believe how I was like this. This I figured for sure would be up around fifteen or something, and so it just sat there, and I I grabbed it. So this is, uh, but it's so cool because the 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 color is on the board, right? It's this isn't an overlay. Right, right. So he now, watercolored this. You can see, you know, you can see the texture here in the shadow. Um, this is watercolored over Busema's pencils, inked by Nebres, and then hand colored by Peter Ledger, who unfortunately is no longer with us. But um, this was now, a you, really do big you think, deal, huh? Do you think that Rudy didn't go nutty with the rendering because he knew it was going to be full color? Because I would have had no, I would have had no idea Rudy inked that. Well, you can kind of look at the look at the line work though. You can see it in there. Yeah, there's some really bold brushwork in there. You can see it. But I'm a big fan of Nebre's inking really solid artists because I love his technique, but his drawing is sometimes hit or miss with me. Mm -hmm. Did he um, work with Gil Kane on that John uh, John Carter? Carter. Yes, he that did. That stuff is amazing. I yeah. want one of those pages so bad, but I know who's got a ton of them. Tom Fleming was an art dealer. He's got a ton of those, but he won't sell them because like John Carter's like his favorite. So, but this is probably I, I wouldn't part with this. There's just no way. It's just too cool. So I'd love to get more pages from this, but you don't see this stuff floating around very much. So but anyway, there is my uh my first choice. Well, that is awesome. I don't think I have I don't think I have anything that's full color like that. Yeah, not I mean full, not a full page. Well, it's like how often did anybody ever actually ever do that in comics? Right. Well, have you seen Dan will know this for sure. Didn't Steve Olaf color over a couple X-Men pages? With Burns. <laughs> Frag is asleep at Frag. the wheel. No, I'm not. My uh, my Bluetooth keeps going in and out. So I'm yeah, I'm not sure if that was that was blue line work or if it was right over. The... No, I meant somebody bought like a burn original and then had Steve Olive color color it later after. Okay, yeah. holy shit! I think I, I remember. Mean, that, I mean, that's a great guy to get to color it, but still, how about a how it... about a color a Xerox? Well, you know what they used to do, right, is they used to uh, – they'd get the black and white. I, in fact, I know Steve Matson, who used to be a colorist, um, he was working on – I want to say it was Glacy inked by Gary Martin. It was a Conan thing, graphic novel. 
and they had got the uh, you know they'd done the ink work. Then they shot shot it on a transparency, right? And so then Steve was doing coloring on a board underneath the transparency. So it was hand colored, and then they'd lay the transparency over the colors, right? And then shoot it from that. And that used to be a fairly regular way of doing that because you never saw them like this do it on the board. Yeah, you know, all three pieces. It was hand colored. That's what they did. So they the 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 actual board itself that they colored on was was all blue lined. Right. So they would blue. They would right. color over the blue line, and then they had like an acetate. It was like an animation cell, like a clear animation cell that would mm -hmm. go over that, and that would be the black holding line. Um, yeah, I dug that stuff. I remember when I used to hang out at the Chaikin Studio. That's how they did most of the color work that way. Um, they used gouache, and then they would just they would just blue line, you know, yeah. uh, over the blue lines. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I do. I have a the only color page I have is a Nexus blue line, like that. You know, that's I like that fun. look mm -hmm. because it's very uh, it's very organic, and it's you can see the brush strokes and stuff like that piece you just showed, Aaron. You can see, you know, like um just the organic nature of it that you can't really do with digital coloring, you know, digital right. is pretty clean looking, pretty yep. sterile. I have a cover of Hawk world. That was, uh, well, they were all done like that, but I have one of the color pieces with the acetate, okay. uh, with the black acetate over the, the, the gouache and watercolor. I have was that Truman. Like yeah. Who colored it? Was that Tim Truman, Graham? No, it was me. Oh, you did it. You're oh, so you colored it. No, no, no. I illustrated it, and I can't remember who the colorist was. Oh, oh, okay. Do you remember what issue number it was? It's do you remember years the, ago, dude. Man, do you I'm remember the combination to Google. Kirk's safe in that one episode of Star Trek? Oh, yeah, that I know. <laughs> that he knows. <laughs> that he actually does know. You ask him a Star I, I Trek. the important things up there, Aaron. That's right. You, that's you right. ask him a Star Trek title of any episode, and he'll be like, oh, it's that one. Yep. <laughs> It's that one. All right. Well, Graham, you're up. All right. Well, first off, I just want to say that there is no piece of art that I won't sell if the price. Is <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put that out there. So uh, everything ha has a price. However, having said that, uh, I've got this one piece, which is a really nice grail piece. Oh, I'm going to full screen you. Hold on. Oh, baby. Oh, Whoa, is that Kirby? No, that's oh, uh, Buckler. Rich, Rich Buckler and Sinnott and Joe Sinnott. Uh, God, I've uh, seen that colored and everything. What was that used for? It was the color of Foom number seven, I believe. Oh that's my great. gosh, that is oh. so cool. Deathlock is here. Yeah, yeah, Dude, and how... that's the first mention of Deathlock. No this kidding, right there. Well, yep. That's Buckler, right? Yeah, yeah. Buckler yeah. promoting his own thing. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Deathlock hadn't come no out fun. yet. And ah. this is the T. Oh, I know. It's Foom cover number five. It's written on the back. That's dope. Oh, wow. That is cool. And what do you think I paid for this? Well, when, when did you get it? Uh, I got it probably in the uh, 90s. You paid $200. I'm going to say a couple hundred. A couple hundred? Mm -hmm. You got it in the 90s? Um, yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll go 350 what the hell? Zippo. It was oh, given to me as, in, instead of a, um, Trick question. a score appearance fee. No way. Awesome. way. I'd take it. I'd take it. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. That's great. I, I got that and an FF12. Oh, you the dog. Hulk. Nice. That, I got it. I got a the uh, most profitable store appearance I've ever done <laughs> when I think back on it. <laughs> How much your, think that piece is worth now? Probably twenty thousand. Uh, was the FF twelve? Um, you remember what condition you got it in? I assume it was good, right? Like, oh, very good. Uh, very it's good. Probably condition. a probably a, a three, five, or four. Nice. Now, what's the significance of number twelve? Because I don't remember. First appearance Hulk. of the Hulk outside of his own comic. Yeah, uh, it's the first Hulk versus Thing matchup. Is Hulk that the one where they're in the cave? Yeah, yep. that's the live oh, show. I love time. that cover. Ah. Uh, my God. favorite FF cover. Oh yes, my gosh. That is what a, a haul. Great, damn, that's a great cover. Yeah. That's I did favorite. a store appearance for a uh, Tales from the Crypt issue. Uh, real nice. It was like fine plus condition. It had a great Jack Davis close up of the Frankenstein monster on it. Awesome. Yeah. Because uh, 
I was I was at a con and the retailer, you know, I asked him how much he wanted for it. And he goes, tell you what, come to my store for free comic book day and you can have it. I go, done deal, baby. See you there. And there it was. With bells on. Yep. That is awesome. That is cool, man. And that's a, like, like you said, that is a valuable piece too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially now it's, you know, with the art, art it's, it's both of them are gone. Yeah. Uh, uh, Senate is, uh, you know, it's obviously Senate who is amazing on everything okay. FF. Uh, Buckler was doing the FF. This is 1974. He, he, mm -hmm. he did the FF that I bought for the first time. Uh, so it had that significance for me. And then there's the whole death lock thing, which is really cool. Well, I you guess know, the I, other I question is you got it. it for, you got it for zero. Do you remember what he was asking for it or what it would have been? Uh, let me see if he's got it priced. Oh, there was, wait a minute. I'm just curious if like, we were, any of us were close. There was a. It says the Zippo. Price inked out. It, uh, there's a, it. it looks like it was inked out on the back here. Oh. Uh, I don't know what the price is. I can't. I Get can't some remember. lemon juice and like there's natural two pressure. Two or three hmm. figures. Magically appear. Yeah. I, I, I would probably imagine it was probably 150 bucks. Yeah. at the time things yeah. were cheaper back then oh yeah I, I think i never thought about this before but i i think it'd be cool to go back to that time like 60s 70s and um just work one year you know at marvel mm -hmm. in like like the early marvel years and and just kind of work as an inker or a penciler or whatever mm -hmm. and uh and just see what it was like you know to yeah. be in the trenches there and and uh to witness that i, I wonder if it felt like it, if they were truly like um like it felt special, like they actually knew what they they ha, ha, were building and that they felt good about it, or if it just felt like like all of our career, like you just hey, you have art. no idea, you're just doing art. work, you know, for hire. I art. think that's the answer. I, 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 art, I say this, I say this about Comics Gate all the time, that this is those times. These are the good old days right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say that. And as well. if you're if you're wondering what it's like, look in the mirror, brother brother well you know the funny thing is i don't think there was in that period of time there wasn't guys breaking into comics that were like fans of comics and that's why they got into comics like say we were i right. think Her. they were guys they were artists just looking for some place to land and writers and that was like the easiest road to get in right burn was and, a fan though huh? yeah, i mean burn, 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 burn was, was one later. of the first fan burn was one of the first fan artists yeah, that happened right. later, but like the '60s and stuff, those guys were like illustrators. They were looking at, you know, uh, working as real "quote unquote" artists, and so right. comics were kind of like how you could make a living by mm -hmm. slumming it, you know. Well, right. They all wanted to be strip artists, you know, because that's yeah. where the real money was. Right. Uh, you know, John Buscema was a huge Hal Foster fan, so he was a fan in in the, in the sense that he liked the medium and, and liked. Uh, reading the comic strips every Sunday, but he wasn't a fan like the John Byrne fan, you know, the continuity right. nuts, you know, that oh, every issue and all that. They, those guys weren't like that. They were just, they they were looking to make a living doing what they like to do. Uh, it, well, and, it, and like ditch. With, Bus yeah. with John Busema, you know, he was doing advertising, you know, he was doing comics, then he was doing advertising, you know, when the comics kind of took the slump, and then Stan wanted to pull him back in, and the big thing that sold it for him was you can work from home. And he was right, like, not the drive in. I don't have to travel into the city anymore. And that was really the big thing because he didn't mind doing advertising stuff because it paid well. But well, you was, have to well, hustle for work. Like if you're doing advertising, you have to go in every day. You have to talk to art directors, things like that. So yep. it, it's, a, it's a lot of uh, energy. I, I worked like that for two years in L.A., and it, it takes a lot of energy to to hustle and get those gigs. But you got to do right. that as a comic artist too. Back in the day, you yeah. had to not maybe in the day, but I never all did. the time and hope something was get art. Well, maybe you guys did, but not me. <laughs> I never went a day without work. <laughs> I went too many. I'm afraid. Yeah, I went a few. I think the longest <laughs> was that's a that's I another, had, another show. Well, well that's another show. Work, I mean, honestly. When I was doing the mainstream stuff, I think the longest I went was maybe three weeks. That's so. not bad. Yeah, three months twice. Yeah, oh, shit. yeah. I've been I've been in the same boat as Aaron, and this is while I was at Extreme. Wow! You know? Really? Oh yeah. 
Was it towards the end at Extreme? Or? 96 during the Heroes Reborn stuff. Like I, it got to a point where I was ghosting. I was ghosting for Chap. I was ghosting for. Uh, I ghosted a bunch of Stephen Platt stuff. I ghosted a bunch of Chap stuff. Like all the stuff on Heroes Reborn, like a bunch of that stuff. Me. Well, the market was slipping there. Like 96 was a bad yeah. year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 96 was not a good year. Yeah, wow. and it just got worse. 98 uh, really, really bit the big one. No. Yeah, it was because I did Tachyon in 97, and it was right after that that I. Uh, well, that's what killed my first, my first blacklist. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> did, you, did you hear him, Aaron? Did you hear Graham? Yes. <laughs> did you? Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing the, yeah. the, the, the I didn't, but I did. Yeah. His maniacal I, laugh. I, uh, I, I'm ignoring him. <laughs> he, he goes, that's what killed comics. <laughs> <laughs> it was that damn tachyon. Yeah. It was that Ooh. damn tachyon book. Yeah, jeez. All it seven was, issues of it just Aaron. crushed the yeah. industry. It was written thought, really well. The problem was the art. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> I, you hear that floating around, but it's really the other way around was the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Aaron. All right, hey, man, what do you got? That's part of the business, man. Okay, well, you know what? Except for you. I, I, my collection is is uh, strictly uh, like just pieces that I love that none of them I ever bought as investments. Uh, a whole lot of my collection is roughs. You know, I've got, mm-hmm. uh, I have an original Frazetta, Krenkel, Burn. Mignola, but they're all these roughs. They're like roughs. They're not sure. like it, nobody would be like, oh, that's my grail. It's just for me, they, their hand did this and I'm happy. You know, right. like there, there's a bunch. Uh, but Graham had <laughs> said something that made me pull a different <laughs> page out. Because on, on our round two, I'm going to have to show two because I'm kind of at odds with, you know, sure. uh, you know, whatever. But my first one is based Ooh. on Graham's thing of, uh, he says everything has a price. Uh, this one does not. I, this you will have to pry this from my fucking dead, cold, steely grip. Uh, once I'm dead, you want to full screen me? I will. All right. Uh, this is a uh, cover by the late great Michael Turner. Oh sure. Oh. And uh, this is my character uh, Darwin Lightwing Ooh. from the Gear Station. Ink by Jason Gorder. Uh, the just beautiful, beautiful rendition. Um, uh, you know, Mike was my, one of my best friends. He was my best man in my first wedding. And, um, he did this as a favor for me. He's just like, Hey buddy, I'll do a cover for your book. Uh, and this is, you know, when, when he was at the, the top of the mountain, he didn't have to do it and he did it. And it's, uh, an incredible piece of work. But as you can see, I got it in a, top loader and everything but this is uh this is the one like it you know for any any other person they, they probably wouldn't have the sentimental attach attachment that i do uh you know but for me like i said this is uh this is the one like i don't you you could offer me a house uh, and and all that other business and uh, you know my wife would be leaving me because i wouldn't part with this sure you know so this is this is uh round one no oh, man, that's sweet. Cover gear station number one by the late great Michael Turner and uh, Jason Gorder on inks. That's very nice. nice. Dude. Yeah, it's really cool. No, yeah. I mean it's you know sentimental. That when we when I get to mine, it's a sentimental reason. But it's funny because like <laughs> I'll wait till it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't blow it. Yeah. All right, Art. Your mic's off. I did that because the dog. Yeah, I'll do this one first, and then I'll I'll try to find the other one. I I don't really collect comic book artwork. I collect animation cells, yeah, uh, that's movie cool. memorabilia, things like that. But there is a piece that I would, and I worked on it, but I would never part with it. Oh. And it's it's this piece right here. That's so this great. is uh, the layouts are by Dan Jurgens. The inks finishes are by me, and this is basically Lois telling Jimmy that. Uh, Lois and Clark got engaged. So this was like a really big, uh, you know, part of comic history. Um, and another thing is I, I was dating Pamela at the time. So that's her right here. Uh, oh, awesome. This guy right here, that's me. 
Um, this is Elvis Presley and Priscilla. They're having uh, yeah. Yeah. dude. That totally that totally counts because I mean I still have pages from things I inked over other people. It still counts, you know. And this this right here about. over here is my assistant Trevor Scott, who became a major major. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Trevor's yeah, amazing. Trevor. And the other guy looks familiar too. The guy next to him, the Asian His name's dude, John John Owens. And I don't know if he ever did anything, but he was pretty talented as well. Yeah. You yeah. can tell that's a real person. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I did that. And, and the cool thing is uh, I did this documentary, this Kevin Burns documentary, Look Up in the Sky. And oh. that piece of artwork was featured. And, uh, and I got to talk about it a little bit. And awesome. uh, we got to do a red carpet for it. And it was really neat because my daughter was there and, and my wife was there. And so they got to see the piece of artwork on the big screen. And uh, I referred to the diamond ring as, as a rock, like, you know, Lois is uh, displaying the rock. And uh, I got a few chuckles in the, uh, in the theater. So uh, it was mission accomplished. So that piece, uh, it will stay in the T-Bear family. I'm, I'm never going to part with it. It's got, it's got oh, some yeah. great history to it. And it's the only piece I've ever felt any real attachment to um out of everything there are some pieces that i wish i kept um uh, but it's more just like it's more just like it's like an investment like some of the right. jim lee stuff and some of the art adam stuff i wish i still had just so i could go you know if i'm ever in a bind you know here's a quick 20 grand or something like that Ooh, yeah but uh other than that yeah it would it would be that so that's more sentimental that's your cool. your work over Jurgens on the Batman issues or uh, Superman issues were it was just great. I loved those, and I wasn't a big yeah. Superman reader or buyer, but I did buy those art. I want you to know that. That's what oh. uh, turned me on to Art Tabera's work. Like yeah. I, I didn't know who he was. I knew who Dan Jurgens was. I wasn't a crazy Jurgens fan. I thought he was serviceable. There was nothing wrong with it. Uh, but when I saw, I got that issue, an issue of Action Comics or Superman, and I was like, Yo, this is different and it's popping yeah. and it it reminded me of like terry austin a little but mm -hmm. more life and uh it was art to bear yeah, yeah. Thank you. it was Thanks, great man. great stuff yeah it was, it was fun i had no idea what i was doing but it was fun yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, and we're still waiting for him to match that level but maybe well, yeah, i know maybe he, 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 birds right that. in the beginning and then fizzles yeah I, yeah I did nothing after that it's only <laughs> the pink tack <laughs> <laughs> that's right uh, I save that, that book that. uh omar comics dar 99 hey, thank you very much oh i'm sorry nope thank you very much omar for the dar 99 shout out to the bros thank you for sharing anytime that's why we're here and thank you i i need to defend myself here graham is giving it get, scooping it on pretty thick here <laughs> let me tell you something about the scripts i was getting <laughs> my editor told me to freelance off the script because they sucked. And so I was, and um, this Kupperberg was the writer. Sorry, Paul, if you're out there. I was there about to say, I know who wrote it. I didn't know if you were going to bring out the, bring out who it was. Well, it's or easy not. to look Actually. it up. I'm just saying that he was not happy. The editor was not happy with the scripts and told me to take some liberties. And then Paul got mad at me for not trying his script. And I'm like, dude, why are you putting me in this position? You know, you told me to do this. To improve like the fight scenes, I just like went way, you know, off what he was, you know, writing and stuff. And it was, yeah, it was. Uh, I think I think the main thing was probably just the time. You know, I mean, it was all, everything in the industry was was starting to go down and the sales were, were pretty much tank and they were tanking fast, like month by month. The numbers were going down considerably. Uh, you're talking about like it, this was like like mid 90s, right? 96, 96 97. Right? It was 97 when it came out. And then I was told by inside people that uh, uh, Kupperberg was going around, you know, blaming me for the failure of the book. And so that didn't help me getting uh, blacklisted over at DC either. So, yeah, I had stuff like that with Fabian Nisiesa, but that's another story. That's right. Another day. But I, will say, I, I like that. I like what you did over Dan. But I do remember one filling issue in that run that Andy Kuber inked over Dan. And I was just like, this is so different looking because that's when Andy was still really doing like his dad, Joe's thing. Yeah. And it was like seeing the Joe ink Dan Jurgens, and it was it was cool, but it was it was so different too. 
Yeah, so. it broke my heart to give up up that issue. But all right, so Andy, for me, Andy, go. It's you. For for me, so what I was going to say is because you brought Dan brought up, you know, Mike drawing the cover for his creator own thing, and you know, for my first two uh, volumes of First Man, I had Bart uh, Bart Sears do two variant covers, and I would obviously never get rid of those. But I'm not counting those in this uh, this uh, stream. So the piece of art is from him, but the story is he gave me this when I graduated the Kubert School, and you know he signed it to me and stuff. And what was cool about it is I was at his apartment working on some homework the day he drew this page, and I think he drew the page in like three or four hours. What? And I just got to see him go from blank page to finished pencils. And I was like, dude, that's so freaking cool. I love Captain Adam. That's awesome. And then, you know, when I graduated, he surprised me and gave it to me. The other funny thing was we went up to the office uh, after he mailed this in. And there was a patch over uh, Power Girl's boobs. And they were drawn smaller. And, yeah. he, and he ripped it off. He was like, ah, come on, Andy. Andy Helfer was the editor. And he. He tore the patch off and stuff. So that that's the sentimental one there is, uh, you know, it was a graduation present and and such. So I'd never get that's rid of cool. this one. So, and then Randy Elliott did the inks on it. So. Clean. So that's mine. Pretty bad. And right there. That's cool, man. I love Bart's run on uh, Just League Europe. I Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a guy who always 99% of the time bought books based on who the art artist was or if I yep. like the art or not. And that was kind of where I discovered Bart was on uh, Justice League Europe and Adam Hughes on Justice League. So that was really there was that great period of time where Justice League was being drawn by Adam and then Bart was drawing Justice League Europe and it was like they were like the two best books oh, coming yeah. out at the time, man. And yeah. then they, those guys were following Kevin McGuire. That was a pretty good time. Yeah. Good yeah, times, they, except they for were, 97. They were fun books, too, you know, story wise and such. So, all right, Aaron. You're I'm going to cheat. Uh, I can't help it um, because I think it's only fitting. I've got other stuff, but the, I got to show you the stuff I cannot sell. I mean, because that's really kind of what we're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. And I got a couple pieces that I not only I wouldn't sell them anyway, but I agreed to never sell them. So I think I think I need to share those. Once again, on my high-res Razor Kayo camera. All right, here's the first one. Now, I've told this story before, but it is a, it's a great story. Oh, oh I, that, that's uh, Walter. This is, this is Walt Simonson. I knew it just from the so, foot. Oh, yeah, dude. The yeah. Foot. Let me bring this down a little bit here so we can. Uh... Dude. Okay, so we're at. Uh... Oh, my gosh. Tim, uh, Tim Townsend was like, dude, I'll give you. Well, he offered me a lot of money for this. And I said, dude, there's no way I can, for Aaron, one yeah. pro to another. The fact that Walter recognized me as professional is, uh, you know. Dude, the inks on those Damn. legs, the the rendering is the ridiculous. Is that well, brush or quill? Quill. Yeah, it looks like that. He, he uses no, mostly Walt, Walt uses a Hunt 102. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's the story on this. We were at WonderCon, and um, it was CrossGen days, or just the end of CrossGen, Andy. And uh, yeah. we were at MegaCon, excuse me, not WonderCon, MegaCon. And um, Walter was there, and Josh was like, I don't know, 11 years old or something. And Walter, like, spent a lot of time with him, talking with him, you know, and answering, you know, his kind of crazy little kid comic book questions and and uh, so he, I asked Walter if he would do a sketch for my son, right, of Beta Ray Bill, because I was like one of Josh's favorite characters. And he said, um, I don't do sketches. He, and I said, no, that's cool, man. I understand. And, um, but then he said, you know, and, and Josh was talking to him about Hero Clicks because Josh was really into Hero Clicks at the time. And he said, did you know they made a Beta Ray Bill Hero Clicks? And Walter goes, I didn't know that, Josh. He said, I'll tell you what, Josh, if you can find me a Beta Ray Bill Hero Click, he said, I will trade you that for a sketch. 
And I, so I grabbed Josh. I'm like, and just drug him around. I'm like, we got to find one quick. <laughs> and so we found one. It cost about 12 bucks, right? Hmm. So, he, so he gives it to Walter. And Walter says, okay, I'll do you a Beta Ray Bill piece. Um, did he write Shelly first? Then he had to correct him. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> just so, right out. Yeah, every, yeah, everybody remembers Shelly. No one remembers me. But so anyway, so he took, uh, he said, I, I won't do it at the show. He said, but I'll mail it to you. And I said, that's cool. Take your time, whatever. That's very generous of you. And um, I don't know, like three months later, I get this big package in the mail. And I open it up. It's got Beta Ray Bill for Josh. It has a Thor frog for Shelly. And he did this one for me. Is wow. the Beta Ray Bill classy, full figure classy, as well? Classy, classy. Yeah, just as oh. a gift. Oh my God! I would love to see that Beta Ray Bill too. Holy! Crap. I don't know. I think Josh has it over at his house now. Yeah, um, I would. Oh, classy. Anyway, so that's that. So, and I would never ever sell this, right? Because I mean, it was a gift oh, for crying out yeah. loud. From, but well, here's the other thing. It's also uh, something to you. Yeah, that's kind of true. But you'd have to sell no, it to somebody named Aaron. Well, no. At at some point, don't you think original art and this stuff kind of has nostalgia when it's like one artist giving another artist, and you got both oh, their yeah. names on it? You can say, "Oh yeah, this was uh, you know Edgar Rice Burroughs gave this to uh, you know." Is that Truman? Who is that? Is that That's Plug? Plug. 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 Okay, this is from his monster card set that he did in the nineties. That's a trading card art. Yeah. What the f, dude? That's I know. Full size. I know it's it's a, 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 a he did all of them like this they were all acrylic or watercolor or oil paintings all this wow. size or bigger for this card set gorgeous they hired him actually to do rather than like when they did the rights and card set and stuff they uh, they used existing material Mike did original the entire card set it was like ninety images or something and he did all uh, original art for these cards. And then he would take them around at, to shows and sell them, right? So it was at a Seattle con. He had this one up, and he had 900 on it. This was 93-ish, 94-ish. Yeah. And uh, I, had, I, I knew him uh, a little bit. We hadn't you know, spent a lot of time, but he had worked on a sludge issue, and we'd gone out to dinner and talked about sludge and stuff before at another con. So I went up to him, and he was, I said, yeah, I love that one. Those are my favorite ones from the set. And he goes – Oh, he goes, I hate that card. And I go, really? I said, uh, then maybe you'd like to sell it to me at a discount. Because <laughs> all I had was a Seattle show. All I had was 500 bucks. And I'm like, Shelly, I know we only made $500 of this show, but I got to get that original. She's like, yeah, okay, whatever. So I was over there and I worked him and I worked him and I worked him. And I said, I swear I'll never sell it. If I'm destitute and you know dying in the street, I will be clutching this painting. I will never sell it. And I said, and I would, I'd say to him, I go, you don't even like it. You know, I mean, I was working him so hard and he finally sold it to me for 500. Wow. So almost story. half price of what he was asking for it. But Love then the story, be persistent. That's right. But here's, here's the moral of the story. Also have a good looking wife because the next time I saw him at a Portland show, he gives this to Shelly, oh my which whoa. is the pencil drawing to the painting. Wow. Jeez Louise. I like the face better on that one. Is that rock hitting him in the head? Yeah, it looks like it. See, it looks, looks like, like the rock is like hitting him in the head. He's like, oh. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so he did He did these um, all these like prelims and stuff. And so he gave that to Shelly as a gift. Not to me, of course, but to Shelly. And uh, so, yeah, so I got these hanging side by side up on my wall. And so those are the Simons one and this one are ones I would never sell because I actually – uh, not only do I love them, but you know, I I promised I would never, and I shall keep my word. Wow. Nice. So anyway, there you go. Beautiful. That's, that's me uh, me cheating and showing two, actually well, three. That's okay, we got time. We could do another. I don't care how many times you go around. Yeah, there you go. Cheating spot. But, uh, that is. I, I remember seeing the color. I never. I don't remember seeing the pencil at your place before. But I remember the color. I, no, it had to be. I had to have it hang. Well. You must yeah, because he we were st we it was before we moved to Florida that he uh, no I might not have had it, I might not have had it framed at the time I don't know yeah because I remember in Florida at your house your studio was upstairs and I remember walking right. up the steps and seeing the color one yeah, yeah. that's right I, I may not have framed it yet that might have been the deal wow so. that's gorgeous all right Graham 
All right, I'm going to backtrack. Uh, I said go that ahead. I, there was something that everything had a price. Well, I, I realized uh, as I looked at my wall over there, there is one piece that uh, will not be sold. Uh, and it is a, it does have a sentimental value for me um, because I got to work with a childhood idol of mine, uh, one of the premier Batman guys ever. And I got to do the layout for the, for the piece, and then he penciled it. And then I inked it. So Ooh. not only did I get to work with this guy, but I got to ink him. And I got to back this up because it's big. <sighs> yeah. Oh. oh, my gosh. Is that? Uh... That's Dick Sprang. Oh, my goodness. You got to ink Dick Sprang. Holy yeah. crap. Wow. Dick Sprang uh, drawing my character. Oh, geez. Uh, and, you know, his, his Batman was like, uh, he's like the Carl Barks of Batman, you know, his right. Batman, Batman yeah, of that yeah. era was the good Batman. Yeah. Right. And then he wrote me this wonderful little letter. Oh yeah. my gosh. I'll read it because you probably can't. How see old it. was he when he did that? In his eighties. Holy crap. Uh, what? Yeah. yeah. And uh, look at this. Um, the Xerox of the pencil. Hold on a sec. Okay. There's the pencils. Look how tight those are. Holy 80 crap. year old dude doing pencils that tight. That's crazy. Yeah. With all those skulls and everything. Everything looked like he had penciled it in 1945. That's oh, how tight wow. it was. When I opened up the Whoa. box, I was, I was scared as shit to put any ink on it. I didn't want oh, to screw man. up. So I did one of those little skulls in the background to warm up. You know, and I, I started working my, my way forward on the skulls and then eventually, um, you know, got brave enough. Then I went on to Bane because I figured I can't screw him up. And then you know the what's last... really cool about that is it's like a hybrid of like modern comics and, and old. Like it looks yeah. kind of contemporary, but kind of old as well. I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty yeah. unique looking. It was uh, 1995. How much How much of your flourish did you put into that? Or were you just like just strictly on his pencils and didn't add anything because you were – the only, about it. the only flourish that I uh, put on it was in the background. The uh, the, the the rain, uh, the lightning, and stuff like that. I felt it needed to be more more uh, darker to contrast and, and pop the figure more. And Is that uh, razor blade work in there too. Oh yeah, there's razor blade work. Uh, you were on, on afraid the to there. use a blade on it though. Like you're like, I did it. Let's take a blade. Oh man, back <laughs> then I used razor blades and stuff. Oh, That's I, fun. I used them all the time, but. In this instance, man, I would have done that with uh, white paint and a ruler, you know? Well, here's well, the here's the big question. If when you got the pencils, you had the technology that you do today, would you have scanned it and inked the blue line so you could have had his pencils next to it or no? Hmm, that's a, uh, that's an interesting uh, question. I, I probably would have, and then I could have kept the pencils. Right. Right, I, uh, framed them next to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's that, there's that, there's that allure though of being, combining your talents with somebody like that to create That's, a new no. piece. Like I always think about that. If I had had a chance to like ink a vintage rights and piece, it's like, would you do it? You know, and and you're like, Ugh, you know. But at the same time, you're like, you'd want so desperately to to be a part of it. But at the same time, you want the the original that they provided for you without unblemished, you know, his little note, he wrote me two letters. This is, um, <laughs> this is the one he sent with the, the black and white artwork. And then when we were done with the project, he sent me a really nice letter. Um, but this one says, dear Graham, Scott allowed me to treat Batman and Robin in my golden age style, which with today's Bane contrasts the meeting of the characters 45 years apart. Thus, thus note, the highly simplified musculature of Batman and Robin and its rendering. I don't know all the muscles Batman sports today. <laughs> it looks like Batman is all set to battle Bane and Robin is a bit hesitant. Smart lad. <laughs> Have fun with this. I enjoyed doing it. Best Dick Sprang. P.S. Don't let our deathless signatures be obscured by too much rain. P.P.S. Many thanks for the books you sent. I'll write to you about their excellence when I get the chance. Wow. That's, That's so awesome. awesome. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's one for the ages there. I won't get yep. rid of that. Oh no, 
That is a that's Last a treasure. Half. Well, like like uh, Art was saying, the Batman. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's pure Dick Sprang. Like if you cover that up, you're kind of looking at it going, "Oh, that Bane's really cool. It's kind of an amalgam of Graham and and somebody he yanked." But that Batman is just. Yeah, it's mm. total sprang. Yeah. Wow. Total sprang, yeah. Well, the Bane is total sprang, too. That's his interpretation. Right, uh, but that sort of classic Dick Sprang look is obvious in the Batman. Batman. Yeah. Sure, because he Bane didn't exist back then. Yeah. But uh, if he did, I'm sure that's how Dick would have drawn him yeah, yeah. in 1945. Yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting <laughs> see a character like that in those old 60s right? comics. Yeah. Where was uh, where was Break your from? back. Where was Dick from back then? Like Arizona. Oh wow. Well, that's where he lived at the right. time in Arizona. Right. right. Uh, he was like a cowboy. Uh, you know, he was uh, he sort of retired and he was doing like Western art uh, and um, stuff like that. I met him uh, a couple of years before this. Let's see, that was ninety five. I've met him the year before at, at San Diego Comic Con. Jim Aparo introduced us, oh. and. Uh, he had a grip like a freaking vice and he was in his eighties, you know, mm -hmm. he kind of, uh, uh, lanky and wiry, uh, looked like, you know, so like, um, Louis L'Amour would describe a guy that got out of the saddle, you know, mm -hmm. and he had hands that worked, you know, because they were very powerful and strong. And when he grabbed your hand, it was like, <clears throat> I was like, Whoa, this is like Hubert strength here. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was really cool. That's awesome. Neat guy. I've heard a lot That's about awesome. the Cuber handshake. Mm -hmm. It was crushing. That's what it I heard. Was that and a slap on the back too. My boy, whap into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. You never walk up from behind and and push his uh, pelvis into your buttocks region. No, I never did that. No, no. amazing. Oh, remember, Art's, remember Art's Ethan got... last night telling that story? I was like, yes. Oh, shit. I was like, yeah, I don't think so. That's not for me. Oh, David yeah. Bogart. Oh God! Curse you! Yes, yeah. and your pelvis thrust. <laughs> All right, Mr. Boom. All right, I Mr. have uh, two. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of rounds to go because I I got kids to. No, I hear you. So there's a uh, this really cool magazine that came out. I think it was 1980, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. You guys have better memories of the older stuff than I do. It's called <laughs> Epic Illustrated Number One. Mm -hmm. uh, it had a Frazetta cover. Yep. And it had a, it had a story in it by the uh, – I love his stuff. I, I mean, especially his old stuff, Mugs, um, Flea, and Fly Trap. Uh, art – art, art – uh, oh. this is yes. page one of his story. It says page 23, Art, but uh, – it was this panel uh, that did it for me. This is pencils, inks, and uh, I don't know if it's Dog Martin dyes or watercolors, but look at if I put my finger here, you can see the detail. Like you yeah. look at that and you go, "Oh man, that's that's a lot." But like when I back up and I go look at that, th that's a tiny figure. Yeah. But look at that. That brushwork is so delicate and so mm -hmm. spot on with those colors. Um, I had to have it and I got it really cheap on heritage auction. Like I, nobody bid against me on it. And I, I don't know why, um, How long ago did you get it? Oh, maybe six years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. About six well, years who, ago. Maybe I, I didn't hear, uh, cause you, your, uh, Cameron and, and, uh, Mike went out. Is that John oh. Bolton? Who is that? No, it's, uh, Art Sudan. Art Sudan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another one of Renee's guys, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, you but, know what's yeah, really lacking in today's comics is just environments like they used to do a lot of organic environments like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. countrysides and forests and and things like that. Yeah. And uh, people it's just want to draw. Yeah. yeah. OK. And here's no, this, is my, jungle. this is this is my uh, my my uh, number two being sneaky. Mm -hmm. It's not a oh, one cheek ahead. sneak, but. Um, Back in the day, uh, I, I became friends with Jack Kirby by uh, just asking him for his phone number. And I used to call him probably twice a month. And then when I moved to SoCal, I uh, got to go down to the their house, Roz and, and Jack's house in Thousand Oaks a few times. And uh, 
on one of the visits, I had asked if I could have one of Jack's pencils. Uh, Roz graciously uh, gave me one. Nice. And uh, I had been searching for a piece of artwork that I wanted to uh, frame with the pencil. And uh, a lot of the stuff was out of my price range. You know, like I saw a couple. I wanted a pencil piece, and those are kind of hard to find, you know, the, the sketches and things. Uh, but then I, I came upon this this piece here, and uh, I had to have it. Uh, it's a this is a Jack Kirby original. Oh wow! wow. Yeah, and but this is because you know I, I started by telling you about uh, how I'm a little kind of neurotic about loving uh, rough sketches. Mm -hmm. You guys are gonna love this, okay? Because we're all we're all artists here. I have to take it out. Obviously, there's this wonderful piece of some futuristic design by Kirby on, on this side. Mm -hmm. But what's even better? <laughs> and, you know, I don't... How do you choose... If, when I get this framed, how do you choose, right? A rough breakdown of Thor. Oh! oh, oh damn! See? You see oh. what I'm saying? You go, oh, that's so neat. That's pop art. But then you go, oh, wait. That's an unfinished Kirby pencil uh, on the back. With what year do you think he drew that? This is the 70s. This has got to be the uh, probably 71, 72, somewhere in there. Uh, you know, just from the look of it. I think this might be r roughly around his return to uh, Marvel or whatever. But, yeah, I mean. That would have been 76. Okay. So, yeah, probably. And. I've I've hit up a, a couple of the, like the Kirby Museum because I've seen stuff with this flavor, yeah. These sort of development drawings, uh, and I can't really get a beat on it. And I don't really need to know uh, the pedigree of it. I just know I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I'm I'm faced with that dilemma of, you know, you just sandwich it between two pieces of glass, and every other day you flip yeah. it. There, there you go. go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, hey Dan, but, uh, why are there there's like punch holes at the top of the? Paper? I don't know. There's like a nasty stain on it, and it's kind of uh, bent up here too. Not by this is how it came. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was in a book. Because sometimes know? animation art will have those, you know, um, yeah, register this, marks. This very much could be for that. I mean, especially when you look at the simplification of things. Yeah, this could have been in a, a animation design. You know, he did all that stuff for Thundar, so who knows. So that was my my uh, my cheat for uh, for uh, the number two go. That's cool. No, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. All these Kirby. heavy hitters, man. I know. Insane. Good lord! Now we're back to art. I've oh, got I've got I've got a curvy piece. Do you? Yeah. Well, congratulations! I don't. I've got a I've you got a signature it? on a Kirby. Yes, I want to see a copy. Kirby piece. I've got a signature on a Kirby. Uh, print so i have some kirby comics <laughs> yeah i've got lots of those <laughs> all right graham hold on i'm on a full screen yeah oh, oh sky masters this? oh my god ink by wally yep wally, Wood. Kirby oh, wally piece oh lord holy crap dude that lettering is hilarious look at that look at that guy in the first panel he's upside down yeah <laughs> it's so good <laughs> look, look, look at the middle panel all the woody Stuff. Oh yeah, mixed yeah. with the curvy stuff, and the hose. That, that's a yeah. woody hose on that helmet right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So hose great. in space, man. You just never know what you're gonna get. That's right. <laughs> did you just say hose in space? He that's did. That's what I said. Hose in space. space. <laughs> well, I wish I had uh, some original artwork. Now, um, I really don't collect uh, comic book artwork, but there is another piece that I would never, I would never part with. I'm going to hit share. Yeah. It doesn't so have to be comic this, art. So get this thing to work here. Can you guys see this? Yes, we can. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is uh the great Tom Bancroft, a Disney oh, animator, yeah. uh, created Mushu, his brother, his twin brother, uh, Tom, uh, uh, or I mean, Tony ended Tony, up yeah. directing uh, Mulan and uh, those those two guys are legendary uh, Disney animators, and so I became uh, pretty good friends with him. I have a few drawings that he did for my daughter too. Um, she has those, but um, 
he drew some uh, like Mushu. He knew that she really loved Mushu. And uh, so he's got, I got some sketches by him. Uh, well, my daughter does. <laughs> and uh, so I just asked him out of the blue. He liked the chrono concept. I just asked him if he, if he would do a variant cover. And he said, sure. And so um, he did Doug from Chrono Mechanics. And uh, he just got it, man. I mean, he's kind of being called to work. So he's, he's uh, slightly disappearing. Um, and so that's what, when, when you get called to, uh, to work, you kind of get pulled from your timeline into, uh, your work timeline. And so, you know, obviously he's a seventies rock star and all these groupies are digging what he's doing and, and then they're disappearing. And I love how the girl's expression go from like, yes, to like, oh no, what's happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's going away. Yeah. Just so, so good. And, uh, so this is what i have right here so this is a really bad um he took a picture of it so i don't have um I, stuff is still packed so uh, i don't have the original um you know available but uh this is kind of work in progress from you know tom so they were all his pencils look at how tight these pencils are yeah he just he just got it man he got it so this is one of those things that one, I'm a big, a big Disney animation collector. So to have an original, uh, not just from Tom Bancroft, but of my character, uh, Doug from Chrono Mechanics was just crazy. And he even put the D shirt on this one little girl here, you know, cause, cause his nickname is the D. Oh, nice. Yeah. So the kid's got like a D t-shirt on. Um, he just really got it. The girl's got, you know, like the seventies clothing on and everything. So it's just such a flattering, you know, thing when you see something like that. And, and also it kind of makes you want to step up your game because you're like, Oh shit, I think this guy just topped me on my own character. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like from that shirt that that girl likes the big D. She likes the big D. Yeah. You, yeah. you get the joke. There you go. That's yeah. the joke. The big D, yes. All you can't right. get it by uh, by Andy Cordra. No, but but mm. to 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 harken back to to uh, Dan and Graham, I said I had this print, so I've got this Icarus print. It's small, but it is signed by Jack. <laughs> well, that's cool that Kirby would sign. It. You got actually Kirby to sign it. Yeah, so it's it's just, and they just used this as a variant cover, uh, like last week it came out. Of colors. course they did. Yeah, of so, course they yeah. did. I was like, you don't have to pay him. But then, hearkening back <clears throat> to art, I got this from Tom Bancroft. <laughs> you oh. son of a... <laughs> That's uh, awesome. In 2003. So, it's a small world. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's a, a good small character. ass. Pretty cool. But, um, so the piece, the next piece, I'm a huge uh, Don Newton fan. Yeah. And I've got a few of his pieces, but the one that I don't think I'd ever sell isn't actually the Captain Marvel one that I own, but the Aquaman one. Oh, yeah. I remember you showing that before. Oh, it's got the paint this. stuff on it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I just, you know. Is that uh, Frank uh, Chiamonte? It is. Uh, yes, it is. Look at you go. Yeah. Graham pulls that Man, one those, out. Those brush effects back there are just incredible. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a cool. lot of work, man. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, that's when so, they used to draw bubbles. Like, I can't stand, like, all this underwater stuff. And nobody draws bubbles. They just draw these characters like they're just floating. Um, oh, yeah, and he signed it. So that's well, well, but art, if they're not breathing oxygen, they wouldn't have any bubbles. Yeah, but look, the the movement, though, it's it's kind of a stylistic thing. I, I loved Aparo's Aquaman. Oh, uh, yeah. Did he do, like, backup? Was it an adventure or something like that? Yes. Well, he took over too after Cardi left. That stuff was so brilliant. Yeah. And then that got canceled. Then they in in the mid seventies he uh, they stuck Aquaman uh, in Adventure Comics. That's what it was. This is from. And then after that, he got his own book, starting up uh, with the previous number system, and that lasted a couple of years, and then it died. Yeah. Because no one cares about Aquaman. Let's just face it. I'm sorry, but it's it's harsh. But Damn you! I, I love the the run in in, in uh, adventure comics. I think Paul Levitz was writing it, and 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 Aparo was at the top of his game. I love yep. that run. 
That's my favorite. That's that's the only real Aquaman I acknowledge. The early stuff when he first got his own book, I don't know who the artist was, but I remember liking that as a kid. Well, are you talking about his own book started with didn't Ramon, Ramona Ferdinand start it? Then Nick Ramona Hardy Frieden, took over. Yeah, yeah, Ramona Frieden, and yeah, then Nick Hardy really took cool. over. Yeah, I love yeah, what Nick Hardy did on Aquaman. Yeah. What was that? It started in Showcase. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's the stuff I have. But the, mm -hmm. um, and then you know I've got a Captain Marvel page by Don as well that has a full figure of Captain Marvel on it, taking up most of the page. Well, let's see that. Oh, you mean like Shazam Captain Marvel or? Yeah, there's only one Captain Marvel. I know. Aaron. I just want. I agree with you. I'm just getting clarification, just in case Andy is. Uh, Andy knows better not to use that word around me. The S word. <laughs> I know better. There's only one Captain of Marvel, and oh, she one. is awesome. <laughs> oh, how dare you? This one I don't know who inked. I'd actually have to look in the book because I've got. Don't worry, Graham will know. I am sure he will. Uh, yeah, exactly. Go full screen. Oh yeah. Oh shit! Look at that figure. Oh yeah, that's why I got it. I was like, shit. That wasn't that. Uh, all blurry, man. That wasn't Weiss, was it? That ain't that. Oh, uh, it's because my stoop. Give me a. If my internet, I'll come back to it. My internet just decided to to take a dump. Uh, well, Weiss, been, Weiss took no. over after Newton. No, this okay, wasn't. So, okay. This wasn't Weiss. No, he never inked on. Okay. But he did do a couple issues, like Graham said. He ended the run. Yeah, the, he did one issue. Yeah. No, he did two. He did two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's Ruben right. That's where they maybe just started drawing him realistically. Uh, oh, yeah. well, I guess Newton did that first, but but they had uh, Schaffenberger inking him, so it still brought him around to that kind of model. Well, and it's funny, too, because in the showcase that DC did that collected them all, they didn't collect those two issues by Allen. Oh, really? They collected, like, the whole run except those two issues. And it's like, that, Oh, I know why. Because it was the return of Captain Nazi. Oh, that's why they didn't. Ooh, it was, this, it was the first appearance of Captain Nazi out of out of the nineteen. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. Yeah. Well, look at that mm. figure work. It might be Dan Adkins. I think it might be. I'd have to look at it. Like I said, I, I've got pretty much all the. Well, not pretty much. I've got everything <laughs> Captain Marvel by Don Newton, everything Aquaman, and I'm only like four or five issues shy of everything Batman Don did. Now, is Man, this the series? Anatomy. Sorry. It's, just, no. it's so good. Yeah. Is this, I'm is this the series that they brought CC back back to start? Yeah. It's the same Shazam Well, no, series? this is from, I think this one. Yeah, this one's from, oh, actually, it's up here. This is World's Finest 274. Oh, oh okay. So, yeah. But yeah, so they, I know when they they brought back uh, what you know they called the book was had to be called Shazam, of course. But right. they it was like what seventy one or seventy where they brought back CC Beck to kind of bring it back, and right. I don't know. That's the one I was talking about. They collected. collected. That's all he did was the first issue. No, no, no. He did the first ten. Oh yeah, okay. And then who took over for him? Newton did. No. Uh, Bob Oxner, and then uh, eventually uh, uh, Kurt Schaffenberger. Okay. Yeah. And then New I think. Didn't Newton do one issue in that run or no? Yes. Yeah. I think he did. I think Don did one issue in the run because I'm remembering in a cover where Captain Marvel was really large in the foreground holding onto this rope. And there was just either a huge boulder or something at the end of it that he was, you know, trying to pull. Oh, it was, uh, it was the, it it was the it was the last issue I think because then they went to World's Finest. Yeah. Uh, it was where they go to hell and they make King Cull. Yeah. <laughs> and then Don did all the World's Finest stuff and he had mm -hmm. a he had a bunch of different anchors on it: Frank Cheramane, Kurt Schaffenberger, um, maybe Dan Atkins. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Atkins linked him. Yeah. So hmm. it was good. I'll stuff. buy that. I've got all those. Yep. That's great stuff. What about you, Aaron? What do you have? What's your grail? Unless you want to go around again, just another piece. I, of I, I don't have time, man. I, I wish. Oh, I that's could, fine. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Well, here's my grail. Okay. Now this is, 
not something that realistically I could get. But if money was no object. All right, let's see it. You got time for this, Dan? We'll do the grail. Yeah, yeah, I do. I just hear all screaming. Right. I, I do. I hear screaming. <laughs> I just hear screaming. That's all. As long as it's not blood curdling. All right, you're going to share your screen? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, there, there, there you go. All right, I got it. Oh, yeah. Um, no, this you don't was... own that. No, I no, said this is a grail. grail if, I, if, I want, want, if something, one piece I could have. Oh, okay. I don't have. I thought it was supposed to be comic art. Yeah, we were sticking to comic art for the grail. Not, not illustration. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If I did illustrations, impressive. yeah, I was sticking right. to comic art for the grail, Aaron. Oh, what a Maybe bunch we of... should come back to you. Fine. Jeez. Right, okay. Graham, so you're up. Can't do right. Frazetta then, apparently. Jeez. Hey, if you pick something oh, from like Sunda, what kind of show is this? Sunda. He did. He did, he did lots of comic stuff. I don't want that. Well, all right. I, I don't even want to play anymore. I'm just gonna say. Oh, he's gonna take his ball and go home. That's how I feel every game show that you host. <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. You and me both. Right, first, Graham's okay. gonna win. Before I <laughs> don't share my screen yet, Andy. I won't. Okay, um, so because nice. this this is so hard. There's so many pieces uh, that I would love uh, to own, but sometimes knowing and seeing the original art, you really don't want it. For example, you can go ahead and, and share my screen. Okay. Okay. This cover is amazing, but it's like a Frankenstein cover. Everything is on a layer. Uh, uh, some of this, like uh, Spider Man and the Goblin, is on uh, uh, uh what's that yeah. sh that uh, plastic type stuff? Oh, vellum. Vellum. oh vellum. vellum, vellum, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is like a paste up of the building, and I think these guys are on a separate layer, uh, uh pasted down too. So, I mean, I, as much as I love this cover, I wouldn't want this original art, okay? Right. It's a great uh, cover, it is, it's it, it just grabs you. Now, this one, I actually asked Jim Aparo if he had, because I wanted to buy it from him. This is my first Batman comic, and it's 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 Jim Aparo uh, at, at his finest. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, I've never seen it. I've never seen the original art for this. I don't know who owns it. Um, I, I can't afford it now, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, I, I would love to have that with the paste-ups, with, with the, the logos and everything on it. I, oh, I yeah. think it would be amazing. And then the final one is uh, this. Oh. Uh, yeah, I do have, obviously, a, a Buckler Senate Fantastic Four, or at least thing. But this one's got the Submariner on it, too. <laughs> mm. And this comic, man, I, I just... This run, 147, 148, which is my first one, 149 was a, a story arc. And it was the Fantastic Four versus the Submariner. And that's where I fell in love with the Fantastic Four and the Submariner. So this would be I like that. I like that Namor uh, outfit he had on there too. That's yeah, cool. I think it's cool. I always thought that was cool. Yeah, I mean, he's you know, you know that, that that belt. Every time I draw it on him and stuff, I keep thinking he's giving himself the Heimlich maneuver every time he bends over. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's always spitting up fish, I guess. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you have, very you quickly, have those the are, abs of steel. If you have the abs of steel, you can wear something like that. I That's guess right. so. I always think of functionality. <laughs> well, how does a rock move? Uh, That's a good question. Well, uh, Iran pushes a rock to move. That's right. <laughs> oh, shoot. I get it. That's, That's it. See? Oh, I got it. Everything's political with you. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness all right that's good i like that 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 the uh the human torch is just in a net like like what the hell yeah that, that it's, a, hey, it's a made of asbestos he, that's right yeah, who, who shot it at him like there's nobody in the image what, what do you think comes out of that belt <laughs> Subby hey, grabbed it and he swung it. It's a fishing net, you know. It's got bolos on it. He ain't Spider Man. It does have bolos on it. And yeah, then what so is that? Some kind of portal that Sue Storm is coming through? That's I called expressionism art. I don't understand. It. <laughs> I, don't I don't understand this cover. <laughs> <laughs> You're so literal. 
How I can know. you how can you like this stuff? There's just rock out there in the water. <laughs> it's comics, dude. No, I know. No, nobody. I mean, come on. That guy's made out of rocks, art. <laughs> I already made that joke. <laughs> That's nice. You know what I hated about that time? Even as a kid, it's like, come on, man. Do we need a third of the cover for a logo? You know, like DC started like that apparel cover that you just showed. Like, you know how limiting that is compositionally? Fuck you. The idea is to sell this thing. <laughs> I know. I agree with Graham. I away. fucking love that. I you love like those. the huge logos? I oh, do. hell yeah. I love the splash pages. With All the right. Go, go back to that apparel cover. All right. Tell me he wouldn't have laid that out differently if he had more room at the top. It's perfect as is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but see, there's a difference with this one because that hundred pages. Anti comics art is. Well, wow. now the hundred pages does take up a lot of space, so I'll go with you on that because then you could move the logo up some. So that's a different story with this one. Yeah, but then they give the little heads on the bottom of the page. It's like, come on, man. I just want to see that Batman in. Dude, I love Justice League covers where they had the heads going down the sides. Yeah, but that would be in. Wouldn't that be inside? That wasn't on the cover. No, they that was on the, on the cover. Sometimes they did on the cover. Some, oh, yeah. not everyone, but yeah. I drew. Art's losing like, his mind, man. Batman I did a and Robin League, better watch out. They're gonna I did step a Justice League heads. retro book, and I did the heads on the side and the main image down the middle. Yeah. Well, the you cool know, thing it, after after the apparel wasn't that the uh, Walter Simonson Manhunter stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That changed my life. Yeah, that stuff was awesome. But you know what? He, the th there's three elements on this cover that sold it to me as a kid. A, 100 pages for 60 cents. That's giant. Yeah. So oh, it's yeah. big. I can see that. Uh, I immediately see Batman's face. Remember, remember, these things are sitting in a spinner rack with hundreds of other bright colors and comics. And this is what you see. 100 pages, 60 cents, and Batman's head. That yeah. might be all that's sticking up. Now yep. I'm interested. I pick that up. I see Detective Comics. I see these other characters down here, and then I see this really, this really cool illustration. Uh, with look at how big the word balloons are. You know, what I mean, you can just see this shit a mile away, and it it just begs to be picked up. <clears throat> that to me is great salesmanship and a great cover. And then Art picks the book up and goes, "I was going to buy this, but the logo's too big." And yeah. Puts like, it back. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I actually own this thing. That's that in the egg. See, you got suckered too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, not really, because you got some great stories in there. I do. But you wouldn't have known it if you didn't pick it up because of the cover. Yeah, now, here's I do, the, here's I do the... remember actually um, being disappointed with some of the reprint stuff in there. It's like, what is this? Like, you know, from the 1920s? Yeah, oh, yeah, like the Ibis, the Invincible was well, shit. Art was uh, disappointed because he's like, was... damn it, I bought this brand new. Now I got it again. What the I heck? already have this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> now, Graham, what a rip off. Graham, do you remember, Graham, do you remember who drew the Eclipse? Awesome. Do you remember who drew the Eclipso story? Alex Tolf. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, oh damn. Yeah. Well, I have to look that book up now. Yeah. And, and then you had Jack Cole doing Plastic Man. So and that rad. wasn't a reprint? Well, the Plastic they Man all was a reprint. They were all reprints. Oh, even the Eclipso? Yeah. Well, the only, original is the only like thing Eclipso. new was all new Manhunter and then and oh, Batman right. story. And then the Batman story, yeah. Oh, was cool. was that Toth Eclipso thing from like House of Secrets or something? Yeah. Uh, Originally? Or, uh, he was also in, well, it was another book Eclipso was in, wasn't it? Or was it only House of Secrets? House of Mystery or... No. If I remember that Eclipso story, that's not even like a full 22 pages, right? It's like a short story. Yeah. Okay, here's here's Art complaining some more. No, no, no. no. I'm <laughs> never I'm recalling ends. the book. Like it's it, it it's got some fond memories. I I'm recalling it. If only oh, it had oh, been really? a 22 page story, he would have bought it. But since it well, was no, only no, there's there's like three good stories in there, and the rest is crap. But it's what do you want for 60 cents? It's 60 cents. What do you do? Yeah, that thing would be twenty five bucks now. The things that the things that really caught my attention were this Apero Spectre covers in Adventure oh, yeah. Comics. Oh yeah, those were wow. So anyway, all, all right, right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Boom, want me to share? So yeah, if you want to share my screen, uh, I have the two grails, but this 
this particular one uh, puts a little grit in my jaw uh -oh. because um, I had it in my hands and uh, I and I have, I could afford it. It's two pieces of art. It's from a, a, a who's who piece. Uh, Dude, I love that piece. This is, that is yeah, it's my Arthur old, Adams. It? It's, early oh, it's Arthur Art Adams. Adams. This is early Arthur Adams. One of the reasons I love it so much. Uh, obviously, this figure is crazy. Like, it's yeah. so good. Look at those thighs. Yeah. <laughs> First time I ever saw this was in a uh, DC role-playing game book. And I was like, this Catman looks badass. Like, Catman's usually lame. But this guy looks great. <laughs> Uh, and I really like all of this business back here, the uplighting yeah. on this guy. I thought this face was fantastic. Um, I had a chance to buy it. I had, Art uh, Adams doesn't draw faces like that anymore. I mean, no, that, like, no this, early, is, early. this is my favorite era of Art Adams. And How much like, was it? 800 bucks. And uh, this, was, this was San Diego Comic-Con 93. I had 500 bucks in my hand. Uh, and the art in my hand, and and uh, I said to the the art dealer, the guy by the name of Glenn Danzig, uh, I said, I said uh, I would like to buy this piece. I have five hundred bucks right now. I'm going to the ATM because people can take cards back in '93. I have to go to the ATM to get you the other three hundred. I have the money. I'm going to get the money. Please hold it for me. I'm going to be back in less than five minutes. He said, okay, I'll hold it for you. I run to the ATM. I can't believe it because this is one of my favorite pieces of art of all time. Like literally. Uh, ever since I saw it as a kid, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm holding this. It's two pieces of art too. It's the Catman on one and the, the blue, all the blue business yeah, was on an, another yeah. sheet. And uh, I'm back in three minutes with all 800 in my hands, smile on my face. I go, here you go, bud. Here's the 800 bucks. And he crosses his arms and he goes, just sold it. No. What a dick. Oh. And I said, dude, you're funny. I said, here you go. He goes, no, I just sold it. And I said, dude, you, you said you would hold that for me. And I told you I'd come back. And here I am. I'm back. And I wasn't even gone as long as I said I'd be. I'm back in three minutes. He goes, it's not my fucking problem. And I said, oh. I said dude, come on. And he goes, you want you talk to that guy. He bought it. And there's this guy holding it all happy and shit. And I'm like, I said, man, he was supposed to sell that to me. He goes, well, he just sold it to me. I said, I will pay you 1200 for it. The guy said, no. I said, I'll pay you 1600 for it. No. And uh, I have not forgotten uh, that since. And so Danzig I get was a the chance, guy who sold it out from under you? Glenn Danzig. Wow. The, the rock guy. What so did... anybody ever ask me what I say Danzig could suck my big fat D shirt? Uh ah, dude, because... he towered over him because he's a short little guy. I know no, he I said I said, why don't you get on your stepladder and punch me in the knee, motherfucker? <laughs> um, but uh no, I, I didn't. But uh the the other piece of art, a friend of mine owns oh. it. I think he still owns it now. He's a gallery owner. A uh, guy by the name of Art Spiegel. This is another Art Adams piece. Oh, um, I always love that piece. This is, I have it. this print. I have the the print. This is again. Uh, this is Art Adams '84. So this is my favorite era of Art Adams. You look at this; it's gorgeous. It's got piece. like Walt Simonson drawn in there. A couple other other people that he knows. Uh, but everything about this, the lush details and the mushrooms, the the mushrooms. Uh, that's uh, great. Bark, I've never, I've the, never I mean, seen it before. Oh, dude, it's called Waiting for the Prince. You can buy this print. It's still available out there. It, it's wow. I, I have mine. It's signed. You know, Art had signed a bunch. There are only 1,200 of them, but you can find them. Nice. Uh, but this Art Spiel had a standing thing on with me. He said, uh, and this is in 90s money. I was like, oh, my God, you have it. He goes, yeah, man, you, you can have it, too, for 10 grand. Uh, and it was 10 grand, 1990, you know, 93, 94 money. Uh, but this is, this is, this is the other grail piece that I wish I had. And I have held it in my hands, but in this case, I don't, I didn't have 10 grand in the other case, fucking Glenn Danzig. I, 
I never, never forgive that guy. No way, man. I wouldn't either. I mean, like right. three minutes. He didn't give you time to. Dude, for what literally, it's worth, when I went, music sucks. Yeah, I went out to the hall. There was no line for the ATM. Came back on my mm-hmm. word, money in hand, cash. The way he crossed his arms and went, sold it. And I was like, ha, 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 dude, you're crazy. No, I'm serious. And he just got all arrogant and dickheaded. And I was like, wow, that is some fucked up shit. So, fuck that guy. Yeah. I think wow. you should still punch him in the kneecaps. No. So, real quick, Dan. Me. I don't know if you're going to be taken off, but just to, just to tag on to that. Yeah. I could have bought this. Oh. Original. Okay. Mm. In 1991, when I moved to Florida, uh, a guy named Jim Ivey, who yeah. actually just passed away, um, had a shop. And yeah. John Beatty and I, Beatty was really good friends with him. We'd go to a shop and he had an original art portfolio. I could have bought this piece. I didn't have the money. <laughs> hundred bucks. Oh, wow. man. Ah. Well, you know what? Th- this piece, and I love Gil Kane. They're like four tangents on this thing that are driving me absolutely I, nuts. I, I can see them. The oh, circle yeah. going into the part of his hair, the of Big Head's hair, little main guy's hair is touching the arm of that guy, the elbow, the edge fingers. of the circle. Finger on the circle. Oh, God. <laughs> it's You know, but I've, I've been there where you have a circle template, right? Yeah. And it, it's not, you just need it a little bit bigger, but it's not. Right. And like, I can't freehand this circle. So yeah. I'm stuck. I have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. But I suspect so, the other piece of art uh, was done on a separate layer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they probably could have moved it. They, they could have done scaled something. it slightly bigger. No, it was on a separate layer. He had both pieces, 100 yeah. bucks. And the way the forearm completes that guy's big head. <laughs> You know? Oh, I, I see like what you're the saying. way his yeah. hair is flopped over in that one. The the line goes right into it. So the yeah. line looks like it's moving his hair. But, <laughs> right. but that figure, the running figure of Animal Man is moving a million miles per hour right at you. And it's amazing. Yeah. I have to ask you, okay, so like Gil Kane's style kind of changed around this time. Um, was he inking himself with a marker? Marker, was- yes. Is that what it was? Because oh, this thing was purple. Yeah, okay. It was freaking purple, man. He was using just a what was the brand name? Pilot, Sharp. maybe. Pilot. Niji, a Niji Pilot. stylist. Yeah. Niji. Those are horrible. Yeah, yeah. you got to get you got to get the archival. You know the stuff that says it doesn't fade. Uh, got a question for you, Dan. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Fraga, how often do you watch the video of Danzig getting knocked out? I only saw it the one time, and I laughed and laughed <laughs> and laughed. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And what sucks, though, this is that this is the other part that sucks because I love Matt Yaki. Matt Yaki uh, is a buddy of mine, known him for twenty three years, and uh, got his start and did a lot of his work for Glenn Danzig's uh, company, Verotic, uh, and and gave Matt a lot of really good work for many years so you know i gotta go oh hey you know you gave my buddy a lot of work and good on you for that but if i ever see you again fucking run yeah yeah just 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 to even everything out too like glenn danzig uh my daughter loves the misfits and stuff and so i got to meet him at a show and uh i was with my wife and my wife called because amanda wasn't with us at the time uh she was on the other side of the con and so my wife calls her real quick it's like your dad's like talking to Glenn Danzig and they're having a good old time. And so um, she, you know, she got the message late. She never really showed up. And uh, so I just asked Glenn, I said, my daughter's a big fan. Um, and so he drew a, like a misfits drawing, like with the skull, with the, the hair and stuff like that. And then uh, he uh, put us on the guest list for the show that weekend. And so we got to see the show and everything like that. So that's just to, just to balance out, but uh, I've heard that he can kind of be a jackass too. But he was. I just don't under like. I still am trying to gather the logic because if it's like, oh, that guy's not coming back, you know, whatever. But it had been minutes, not right. five. Well, also, he told you that he would hold. He it. said he'd hold that it, and I big and big. I. He saw me running to the ATM, and yeah, because out of breath, holding back. money coming right back to him. 
Yeah, because if he would have said, you know, I, I can't hold it, you know, um, it's first come, first serve kind of thing, then right. you at least knew what you were you were in for. But yeah. saying that he would hold it, that's that's criminal. That's not cool. And well, back it, then, we know what yeah. Dan looked like. How could you do that to that lovable face? He had the hair. I, I mean, he was clean shaven. I was he clean shaven. Had a little baby fat still. How nope. could you do that? that now, no now, if it was this Dan, you'd be like, that thug ain't coming back. No, he said, sir, it's yours. That's what he would say. He'd hand it to me free. He saw this Frager. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Listen, dude, you're going to take 500. You don't even like the piece anyway. It's a it's a fucking page from Lepresti's book. You don't even like it anyway. <laughs> That's right. You just said it was shit. No, but I still I still you know, and we got to do an episode of the art that got away because sure. I owned a long shot cover. I owned a page of Dark Knight. I owned a bunch of McFarlane pages from okay, Spider Man. So we right we can do the ones thing. that got away. You know? Okay, I don't have, and I'll have nothing to show. Yeah, you do. Well, either. it's well, there's nothing. Art, you have plenty because of the covers that you sold and the X Men stuff you sold. That oh yeah, I didn't away. hold on to yeah. Right. That's, that's wrong right. work. Yeah, yeah, most yeah. of my well, time. it is, but you know, it's still like a Jim Lee piece or a Wills piece that is worth you know what is that Kirby? That's a Kirby. This is this is my uh, you know holy grail right that's here. That's Kirby, isn't it? No, this is this is my father. Oh wow. Your father yeah. was Abe Lincoln. You are <laughs> old. <laughs> he is old. That's right. So what that's is he doing? Right. A future portrait of you? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I was a kid, and this inspired the hell out of me. He drew this yeah. with a ballpoint pen, and he drew it all freehand. And there's no underdrawing here. It's just wow. all ballpoint pen. Wow. And uh, and I remember. Uh, I wanted, I wanted to, you remember when you had show and tell in elementary school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to brag on my dad so bad and my mom wouldn't let me take it. And then finally she did and she rolled it up in, uh, and then she put it in like a, not a toilet paper, but like a paper towel roll. Oh, yeah. Um, and it still ended up getting folded. See the fold. Right? Hey, but do you see how I thought that was Kirby for yes, a second? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the eyes mental. and the, the mouth, the rendering of the mouth. Yeah, yeah. My dad uh, was a big Kirby fan. But yeah, so so then when he passed, you know, I'm going through, you know, the family stuff. And I found this and I was like, oh, holy crap, man. And so this is on the wall in the studio. So this has always been a big source of inspiration um, he drew it in 50, 57. Wow. Roy Thibbert. Roy wow. Thibbert. Yes. Thibbert. Yeah, oh, so that, that would be my holy grail. But that's you nice. own it. But you own it. <laughs> yeah, I own it, yeah. All right, Aaron, do you have something now? Yes, I've got something. You guys make me oh, sick. God, what a little curmudgeon today. Oh, you started wow. this. He's not a little curmudgeon. I am I'm a big old curmudgeon. All right. Okay. Here's the piece. And it's it, this is the sad thing about this is it's not even the whole piece because you can't find it. Oh, I'll tell the story in a second here. Let me, uh, All right. let me bring it up. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, pushing the buttons. There it is. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Now this writes and did this twice up. It was a sample page for a French comic, right? It says, it says down there at the bottom. Um, and this is only half the page. I've never what? seen the full page reproduced. There is like, I can't remember now off the top of my head, if there's a panel running, a horizontal panel running across the middle or if it's at the bottom of this page. I think it's across the middle. Um, and it's... I, I, this guy had it at San Diego for uh 2500 and this was in the oh. 90s oh, and i every time uh, i'm sorry the first time he had it was for 2000 right and i was like i couldn't i couldn't do it maybe i could have gone 1500 maybe but it was like 500 was just like I, so I, I sat there and just stared at it you know and stared at it and come back and look at it and come back and look at it then the next year the same he still had it which was amazing to me and then, it, but it was up to 2,500, right? 
And so at that point, it was always like five to seven hundred dollars ahead of me. I could never yeah. get caught up with it. And then he finally, the next year, he had sold it. But um, it, I mean, just look at those expressions on that that Frankenstein monster's face. Can just you zoom in on it, any? Uh, yeah, panel yeah. one and two are blowing my mind, and in the, in the sh shading on uh, dude's face and middle panel at the bottom is great. Yeah, look at that. Just the oh figure, though, I love. But yeah. I like the one big tooth. <laughs> yeah. But look, it's just like, you know, you know there's all this dialogue there. Obviously, you can't see it, but it's there in what, pencil what, mostly. What was it? What was this job? Like was He was trying to get a European he was trying to get a European publisher to do a Frankenstein book comic. Okay. Wow. And this was like 75, so this is like right wow. during his heyday where he was killing it. And I don't know why it fell through. But look at the angle on this, This, uh, pardon me, look at the angle on this last panel. That is a yeah. tough angle. And it's just awesome. You know, So much information in there, too. The wind with the leaves, the guy in the back. I like I this middle panel because you have yeah. the, uh, the opposing angles. And you've got the up view and the down view. And the two mm -hmm. characters looking off in different directions. There's so much motion yeah. in a simple talking head panel. Yeah. The I'm, lighting. I'm, pretty certain that there was a, a horizontal panel i think it was i think it was inside the lab so it was like a lot of the lab stuff you know that you saw in the frankenstein book but yeah. that's what irritates me about this i don't understand why the whole page is not reproduced any place but it even in the this book the lost bernie writes in the lost frankenstein pages it only reproduces this is that's what this uh scan is from it only shows this much and that is not the whole page and i've never yeah. seen it even in, I think it's in a look back too, and it's just this. It's not the entire page. Wow. But yeah, I don't know who owns it now, but it's not me. I'll have to look. I I've got the look, the look back. I don't I don't remember seeing it, but I haven't. Looked I think it's in the Frankenstein in section in the look back, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I'll have to check. But it's definitely in the Lost Frankenstein pages in this book right here. But this is an expensive book because it was like a small. Uh, um, Independent. It was Apple Press. It was a very small print. How many book. pages is? It's oh, very. Really oh thin. wow! Yeah, it's just it's just got like mostly Frankenstein pencil stuff and re rejected pages and uh, from the Frankenstein stuff, but it has that one story page in here. That's Gorgeous. cool. Gorgeous. Yeah. So well, there it is. That's the one that got away. The one that got away. <clears throat> well, mine actually got away too because, like I said, it was on Heritage. It was on Heritage, but I couldn't afford it. It's Joe Kubert drawing my fave, he does, Hawkman. Oh. <clears throat> from Detective 200. And I just love, <clears throat> well, I love the top three panels where he's just grabbing the gear. But that bottom, you know, that last splash panel of him flying off. Just this that is unique from angle. DC Comics Presents, isn't it? No, it's Detective 200. Why is Batman in it? Or Superman in it? Uh, you'd have to read the whole story <laughs> because it was all different chapters because, you know, a different artist at every chapter. Okay. So. Is Aaron still here? Or did he, we lose him? No, oh, we lost him. Hmm. He's not down below on my stuff. So if he comes back, I'll pull him back up. But right. I just love, you know, the thing I always love about Joe is just the way he indicates things. Mm -hmm. Does he have a giant key on his, uh, his belt there? What is that hanging from? It's a mace. Oh no, wait. no, no! Right no, under, right his, here, his arm. Oh yeah, you can't really tell what it is. And some <laughs> sort of net. Well, it's a net, but then there is this thing that looks like a key. Yeah. Huh. It's the key to the city. It is. <laughs> and look, there you go. There's some razor blade stuff right there. Oh yeah. You know, Classic. just the way he indicates everything. And I do have, a, I do have another one. Uh, Those are the things he grabbed in the first three panels. Yeah. yeah. Those are the things hanging on. Of course, this. I mean, come on. This classic Neil. And, uh, you know, I didn't have half a million dollars. So. <laughs> that was a half a million. It was 500,000. This thing went for like 546, I think. Wow. Yeah. It was, only, it's it just, was within the past five years. Yeah. It's people of that age group uh, that are big baller money, like lawyers and showrunners and mm -hmm. you know, 
I mean, you know what sucks though is that there's no provenance on these things, and Wait. the uh, and Neil's family doesn't get money for that. You know, um, that's just wrong. You know, yeah. there, there should be provenance on this stuff so that when when somebody sells it above the original sale price, a percentage of that goes back to the artist. Yeah, but how would you regulate that? That'd be. Well, they do it in Europe. They do it with fine art. And um, what's his name? Uh, Barry Windsor Smith does that. Um, I mean, a lot, some of it's going to have to be, you know, uh, on you to track it and watch it. And, you know, they're supposed to sign a contract for it. And, you know, but you know how the, some of these art collectors are. They're pretty shifty. Mm. I'm just looking. I got that. Uh, it's kind of wide out. I don't want it. <laughs> oh. Oh, you're right. I'm, I was wrong, Graham. It's Justice League 200 for that Hawkman. Oh, okay. That makes sense because uh, um, but he did Batman do a 200 would have been in the 60s. He did do a uh, – it was Detective 500, my bad, and he did do a Hawkman story in that as well, though. Yes, that I remember. So, I, but yeah. the fact that he's teaming up with Superman makes sense that it's a Justice Yeah, League. yeah, it was Justice League, so my bad. Says something net, something crossbow, something in a flange mace. An iron mesh net, a crossbow, and crane quin, which is that, that thing is. that's hanging. That crane yeah. quin yeah. is what's hanging. Yeah. Aaron says he's in the back. Oh, yeah. There My we go. crane quin is hanging too. Oh, damn. Yeah. Aaron, what happened? I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Drink. I pulled a boomer. Boomer. Yeah. Uh, I gotta roll out soon. I gotta put the the three year old to bed. No, it's all good. We can we can wrap it. Yeah, we're, we're crushing on two hours. So let me uh, remove this. And uh, once everybody, of course, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Professionals. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Next week it will be on Arts Channel. T Bear. And, and what uh, we're gonna do? What we're gonna do is uh, I want everybody to either videotape or uh, take photographs of their studio. So I want like all the details of your studio, uh, tools, equipment, things like that. Oh I know Dan, but people want to see the work in progress too. I mean, you got, I know you got some water damage and stuff like that, but I think they want it. They want to see. Didn't I share the 3D uh, version? I know you just shook your head like no, like you didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I shared like on one of our episodes. I they did a 3D scan for the restoration, and you could literally fly around the studio. Well, I then mean, you already like, have the the you video. You can't go in the drawers. <laughs> you know, I, I I did a show on my studio where I went around and that was fun. Around. I watched that. That was fun. Well, this is going well. hanging out with Graham. Yeah, all but six we've of never us done it on the professionals. So. Well, let's do it. All we'll right, we can do it. And, and then all like like tools of the trade too, like. Like and then just kind of how you set up your space. So like no like, staging, guys. What's that? I'm not going to clean mine. So no, I'm not clean. Clean. Like, Leave it as you is. are like, in for a horror really show. To pen. <laughs> you, you should see this mess. Yeah, but I, I think it'll be interesting and in just right. kind of how we set things up because like like I have a certain place I put my pens, my pencils, my stuff. You know, so I can, I, I have access to it quickly. You know, did you say like you that. have a certain place you put your pants? My pants, my pencils, my erasers, my uh, pens. And then, you know, like some of us work digital, so I, I'm sure their uh, workspace is uh, a lot cleaner than some of ours, you know. Not my desk. It's a mess. It's a mess. But I think <laughs> that sounds fun. good. Uh, everybody want to go around and pimp a little real quick, Graham? Sure. Uh, the files for Giant Size Two-Fisted Man Tales were sent to the printer today. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, the thing is complete. Um, I uh, proofread it and everything. And so um, they analyzed it. Everything's looking good. So uh, now we're just figuring out uh, when I'm going to get my books. It's looking like um, early to mid-September. Awesome. Dude, that is awesome. Yeah. That is great news. Yeah, And so, and then the next thing, um, and there'll be a sign-up sheet for this, is the launching of the Plushy Chanu. Uh, there's gonna, bef before... Um, um, uh, uh, the Ghost of Matacumba Key, they'll be the plushie, uh, and those will be ready to ship just about the time that the, the campaign ends. So there won't be any lag time. It'll be bam, bam, bam. And then we'll launch uh, um, Ghost of Matacumba Key. Nice. So fun, exciting stuff in Compass Comics world. Do you have any of those plushies made yet? No, not yet. Uh, I had a digital design uh, uh, or a design I sent in, um, and then. Um, 
uh, they're going to work from that. Cool. Sweet. Uh, Dan is up. Yo, uh, working, working hard on black flag. Uh, some of the day job stuff just wrapped up on the, uh, finale for doom patrol. Uh, been, been, uh, finding on both ends of the candle, lit, both ends of the candle are lit, especially this week with, uh, with the kids, but, uh, working away, looking forward to putting the baby to sleep as far as the book. Uh, so I can get my files off to the printer as well. Uh, very stoked about that. Um, looking forward to streaming again. I haven't this, this show and, and sometimes Kings is the only shows I'm doing, but I, I looking forward to getting full time. Anybody that's not following, uh, my YouTube channel, you can find me at Frega boom. Uh, and, and, I am part of the rotation of these fine gentlemen. Uh, and, you know, Billy Tucci's not here. He'll be back here next week. Um, so follow him, too, and, and uh, check Billy out. And that's, there you go. that's the news. And, Party and, bear. And uh, fun sketches of bodies. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. nice. Man, I take my shirt off once for Dan, and he just has to draw it You know what, dude? The heart wants what the heart wants. Look at that Andy. Mm -hmm. Look at that Andy Smith right there. Inspiration, yeah, yeah. inspiration. Look at those four muscles. Look at those. <laughs> four. That's all I have are four. And he only they're has huge. four. <laughs> yeah, but they're I all mean, huge. Like you may have a six pack, but I have a keg. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I have a six pack. Well, well. First off, like the the CG uh, vacation is still uh, live right now. So go back that. I think each one of us have a piece in there um, that is being uh, put together by. Uh, the Diaz brothers, Philip and uh, Brandon. And uh, it looks great, man. It's great. So if you guys are a fan of like the old Marvel swimsuit stuff, uh, it's going to be uh, like owed, like a, like a tribute to that. There's also going to be ads. There's a cool Inco ad in there that I can't wait for you guys to see. Oh. Um, so that's, that's going to be fun. And also a uh, big news, uh, Pedro Eng and Valen Klaus's uh, black and white high octane adventures, the animated black and white story is done. All the artwork is done. So we're going to get that off to the letters and then, or the letter and then uh, off to the printer. And um, we do have a lot of the black and white stuff printed up. So uh, all the stretch goal stuff is printed, uh, manufactured. Uh, oh, here, it's this book right here. Uh, this is the uh, volume one second printing. So we have that done. And then we, uh, I'm going to, this isn't the actual book, but um, we're going to do a, um, a second chance for chrono mechanics as well. So we have that awesome. coming up very, very soon. Um, that'll be fun. And, uh, and Aaron's uh, Zen cover. will see the light of day again. Oh yeah. Nice. That thing came out waiting for that. Thank you. Um, oh, Oh, okay. Um, I am uh, uh, shipping out Wraith of God right now, even as we speak. Well, not even as we speak, but I did earlier today, brought another hundred. Uh, that's 300 dropped off in the last two days at the uh, U.S. Postal Service. That's 900 packages shipped. And some of those packages have multiple books in them. So it's more than 900 books. It's closer to 1,500 I books. I love that picture of you in the, in the, with all the books in the back of the truck. The yeah. pickup truck, yeah, that yeah. video. Dude, the I had books in the back seat too because they wouldn't fit all in the the bed of my truck. But um, awesome. so yeah, that I'm trying to get a hundred done a day, and we're pretty much on that schedule. Um, and uh, the the reviews are in, the critics are raving. So thank you so much. Everybody seems to enjoy it, and that's always a good thing. And uh, which leads me to say to remind you guys that the Wraith of God sequel, Blood Hunters, which also features a backup Garbage Man story and a nightclub story, are in that book. And perhaps more, some Kit Carter will be in it as well as a stretch goal. So the early, the pre-launch sign-up is open right now for that book. So please run over to Indiegogo. In the link. It's the in the link. Below. Thank you. Yeah. And unlike what I did to Andy when it, you hit his link. It took you to my campaign. I think, <laughs> I think this probably actually takes you it does. Uh, to the sign up. So please take a moment out of your busy day and sign up for Blood Hunters. Also, Aaron, um, my wife Pamela sent uh, Shelly a uh, package to oh. hopefully uh, cheer her up a little bit. So tell Shelly oh. uh, to keep an eye. Okay. Thank you very much, Art. That's very nice. Thank you. 
Cool. And, and, uh, and I was going to say quickly that Shelly is doing good. The pain management is a pain in the butt, as you can imagine, after major surgery. But she's she's doing well. And they got all the, the cancer. We see the oncologist on the 4th to see okay. if they want to recommend further treatment like chemotherapy or uh, radiation, which right now seems like it, it may not happen. But there's always that possibility. But we won't know uh, till the first week of August. But things are going as good as can be at this point. So thank you all for your right. prayers and support. And they will continue. Oh yeah. Thank you. And then um, first man shipping out link is in the description below. So if you haven't got your first man yet, go get it. It would ship out the next day. So first man two, boom, pick a cover, pick a cover, get all, get three. If you haven't picked up volume one, so uh, you can get volume one and two uh, core draft. The reckoning is uh Sign up is live, and if you sign up and back the campaign, you'll get that trading card of Saucy. Lil Enough. She is saucy. So you'll get that. Uh, Randy asked if I had the pencils to show. I didn't scan them, so I do not. I only have the inks to it scanned. I didn't scan the pencils. Uh, but you'll get the full-colored card if you uh, sign up and back the campaign. Well, I've and been hearing a lot, of, a lot of people are excited about Cordra. I've been, yeah. hearing, I've been hearing some stuff. I've gotten some good feedback. I've gotten a lot of signups. So thank you, everybody that have uh, already signed up. So it's it's doing great. Hey, and Andy, thank you all for watching. Before we go on the storytellers, uh, uh, Chuck Dixon and Mel Ruby are going to be on talking oh, about Ruby. Ninja Bear. Uh, and they, they got it funded today. Yes, they hit 50000 today. 50000 yeah. Yep. So it's, it, it is funded. Uh, I think it closes tomorrow, but we're going to have them on the show before it closes. And you can have a chance to get onto this really, really great project. Um, so tune into the storytellers tomorrow at seven for uh, Chuck Dixon and uh, uh, Mel um, Ruby. Awesome! And uh, so Randy, guys, Lincoln, make sure you throw some bear uh, in your comics because it's the key to success. Oh, this guy backed it yesterday, so that's cool. And Randy, thank you for the two dollars. Lil Aneth knows how to use that tail. Oh, she does. She's a naughty girl. So until next time, everybody say goodbye. I'm just ending it this way. Cold end. Goodbye, everybody.